chair will call the August 3rd meeting of the Stanley County Board of Education to order. This time I'll ask Ms. Uh, Watson if she'll have the invocation in the Pledge of Allegiance. a motion the board go into closed session personnel matters North Carolina General Statute 143 318 11A6 student matters General Statute 143 318 11A1 and attorney client matters North Carolina General Statute 143 318 11A3 I move we go into closed session okay Ms. Gibson second by Ms. Poplin during discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye those opposed no motion carries board back into open session uh, our next item on the agenda is the uh, consent uh, request for approval of minutes of the June 22nd June 23rd June 30th and June 19th special called meetings are there any corrections to those minutes Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. Those opposed, no. And the motion carries. Committee reports, instructional program is Gibson. No report. Facilities, Mr. Graves. Uh, I have no report, but I understand we did have a meeting yesterday. Was there anything you wanted to comment on, Mr. Chairman? Oh, there's nothing that'll be brought up this time. Okay. There'll, there'll be a follow-up meeting later on. Finance, Mr. Sorensen. I have nothing to report at this time. Personnel, Ms. Watson. No report. Policy, Ms. Poplar. Per usual, I have I have a report. Um, I have one policy for final approval tonight, and then I have policies for to be tabled for 30 days. So the policy for final approval is policy 4150, student assignment. Okay, this comes out of committee, so I uh, need a. Um, to approve yes, move to approve policy 4150 Gibson to approve policy 4150 do I have a second second any discussion any none all those in favor say aye, aye. those opposed no okay. and what policies are you tabling um, policy 3000 goals and objectives for educational <coughs> program 3100 curriculum development 3101 dual enrollment, new policy 3102 online instruction, policy 3110 innovation in curriculum and instruction, policy 3115 curriculum and instructional guides, policy 3120 lesson planning, policy 3130 grouping for instruction, policy 3135 homework, new policy 3140 evaluation of instructional programs, policy 3200 selection of instructional materials, Policy 3210, parental inspection of an objection to instructional materials. Policy 3220, technology in the educational program. Policy 3300, school calendar and time for learning. Policy 3320, school trips. Policy 3330, moment of silence. Or to be tabled for 30 days. Per board policy, these table, uh, policies are tabled for 30 days and will be <coughs> discussed at our next meeting. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you. Legislative Resource Network, Dr. Dennis or Ms. Gibson? No report. No report. Superintendent report, Dr. Dennis. Chairman Chance, what I have before me is a resolution drafted by Chris Campbell of Campbell and Shatley and is the Stanley County Board of Education resolution regarding face coverings. I will present it to you for your approval or disapproval. And it states, whereas the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services revised the strong schools 
North Carolina Public Health Toolkit, effective July 30th, 2021, to address recommendations for the operation of K-12 schools for the start of the 2021-22 school year. Whereas, following an increase in reported COVID-19 cases in our state and county, including cases related to the transmission of the Delta variant, the current recommendation in the toolkit is that all school districts should require all children and staff in schools K to 12th grade to wear face coverings consistently when indoors. Whereas the toolkit contains the current requirements related to student and staff isolation and quarantine to be enforced by direction of local, local health officials. Whereas the isolation and quarantine requirements include the following exceptions for close contacts. Circumstances where fully vaccinated individuals are asymptomatic, individuals who have tested positive for COVID-19 within the past three months and have recovered and are asymptomatic, and a student who wears a mask appropriately during close contact with an infected person. Whereas the toolkit includes additional recommendations that the Board of Education does not wish to pursue related to employees disclosing their vaccination status and required testing of individuals for COVID-19. Whereas the Stanley County Board of Education is dedicated to maximizing the educational opportunities for students to receive in-person instruction throughout the 2021-22 school year. Whereas the toolkit no longer recognizes optional remote only education by parent choice or by Board of Education mandate. Whereas the students forced to quarantine and isolate will not have the benefit of full-time synchronous and asynchronous education thereby creating a significant barrier to the successful provision of in-person education for Stanley County students. Whereas Stanley County is now classified as a red area due to the current positivity rate of approximately 13.9% and whereas in order for Stanley County to qualify as a yellow area, the positivity rate in combination with other relevant factors will need to decrease to approximately 7.9%. Now therefore, the Stanley County Board of Education resolves and adopts the following. Number one, while inside school buildings and other enclosed spaces utilized for student learning, field trips or enrichment activities, face coverings will be required for all employees and students for the 2021-2022 school year. Order, order, I will clear this room. I'm not gonna tolerate any disruption tonight. Until the positivity rate for Stanley County falls below 7.9 during a consecutive two week period. This requirement does not apply to outdoor activities including recess, physical education, and other learning opportunities. Appropriate physical distancing will be utilized during outdoor activities to the greatest extent possible. School visitors including parents and volunteers will be required to wear face coverings when present in the building. School visitors, including parents and volunteers who have direct interaction with students and employees during the regular school day will be required to wear face coverings when present in school buildings. At other time, the board requests that individuals who are not fully vaccinated wear face coverings. Employees and the parents of children that are not vaccinated are encouraged to discuss, discuss vaccination with their medical provider. Students and employees would not be required to disclose their vaccination status or be subject to mandatory testing. At the least, do not need to wear a mask when engaged in strenuous activities. The superintendent is directed to institute appropriate mitigating measures to assist in stopping or slowing the spread of COVID-19 for students and visitors. Students riding public school transportation must always wear masks due to the current federal mandate. The decision is based on current data and desire of the board to maximize the opportunities for all students to attend school and receive in-person instruction. The board reserves the right to rescind or amend this decision at any time based upon circumstances deemed relevant by the board. Thank you. I realize there are a number of folks who are not happy about this issue. I also realize there are a number of folks who very much want this issue to be the case. The board's first priority is by all means to keep safe in classroom face-to-face -face instruction for your kids. This board is in full support of and was up until this week making masks optional. <laughs> Either hush or leave. The choice is yours. The board has been placed in a very difficult situation with additional following points to consider. A substantial increase among the youth the testing positive. It's the parents' decision. 
Uh, you want to take this gentleman out, please? Uh, 87%, 87% are okay with, you know, we don't have, I said 13%, we're going to Please remove this gentleman from the room. 13% and 87, that's math. Anyone else like to leave as well? I'm not going to have this meeting disrupted. Folks, I'm asking you nicely. I'm not going to ask you again. I'll just clear the room. Make up your mind. This meeting's going to continue one way or the other. I don't have any desire to read anything else to you folks. Chairman Shins. This time I'm going to call the vote on this issue. All those in favor of the resolution as presented. Why don't we hear Oh, oh sorry, I need a motion. Pardon me. We've got something to say before you call a vote. And we deserve to be heard as the people of this county. Both sides need to be heard. There's no reason to call a vote till we get to speak, people. This is not right. We elected you. Could, could we kindly just do the public? First, before you come to vote, How that, that's can you all. Do this without listening? How? Every school system around us has no mask. Ma'am, ma'am, please quieten down. Could we, could we possibly entertain the idea of us speak? Have, have just the five, the five that have signed up. Could we speak before you come to vote? That's not my decision. Uh, who's? Who's in it? It? Who's it? decision? Who gets to speak? Can, can y'all can y'all discuss at least entertaining letting not letting those who signed up speak before the vote? You know, just one point. It seems reasonable. So yeah. Take a vote on it right quick. We're, we'll have a vote. We will have a vote. I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be disruptive in that question. Legitimately. Hey, uh, Chairman Chance, I'm uh, just looking at a revision that needs to be made. And with uh, our legal counsel agreement, we're just going to strike paragraph two. All paragraph two says that school visitors, including parent and volunteers, will be required to wear face coverings when present in the building. Paragraph three, which is the one, these were alternate paragraphs, school visitors, including parent and volunteers who have direct interaction with students and employees during the regular school day, will be required to wear face coverings when present in the school building. At other time, the board requests that individuals that aren't fully vaccinated wear face coverings. So those were meant to be alternatives to each other, but he recommends three over two. So. Yes, sir. And he said, and you, you can vote on it as long as you agree with that change. Would, would, the, board, would the board at least entertain the idea of letting us have our, our public session of speaking before you vote on the mask? Yes. Please. I, I'm not trying to be disruptive. I just, if you're going to give us the time to speak, why not before you cast this vote? Please. You've already approved it. Jimmy. Could we possibly do that? All of these parents. Let us speak, please. They don't want to hear it. That's, what that's, that's all we want to do is, is, is do our portion before the vote. The agenda has already been approved for this okay. evening. And we'll take a motion from the board to the school system. And I make a motion. Excuse me. I make a motion that we amend the agenda to allow for the public comment to occur before we take any further action. I second the motion. I don't have any problem with listening before we vote. Thank you. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. We have nine people to speak under public comments. Um, so you have a choice. Each person can speak for a minute and 35 seconds, or you may um, determine one person to speak on your behalf. I can say my piece faster than I was going to. Take the first five that signed up. Okay, uh, Kaylin Honeycutt. Thank you. 
So my name is Kalen Honeycutt. I'm a parent of three with two entering Stanley County Public Schools for the first time this month and one shortly after. I'd like to first say I'm very nervous to speak like this, but I've recently realized that I'm hearing folks for years say they'll never let it happen in reference to losing our voice and our rights. But what we're forgetting is that we are the they that weren't supposed to let this happen. It's time we get out of our comfort zone and stand up for ourselves, for our community, and most importantly, our children. So with that, I'm here. I'm uncomfortable, but it's time to stand up. I'm sure you've all had an earful before tonight on the statistics from both sides of the political aisle and likely more to come tonight, so I won't really harp on that myself. I'm here to make an appeal. I believe there's two types of people in your position. <clears throat> there's the good person who does this job because they truly care for the students of Stanley County, and there's the selfish politicians yes. who cares only to push their agenda and to further their political future. I'm here tonight not to accuse anybody of being one or the other, but to appeal to both of you. If you're the one who cares for the students, listen to them. Do you want to see an immediate and amazing uptick in the students' attitude towards returning to school? Do you want to see a jump in productivity and positivity in your student body? Then vote to remove the mask mandates from our schools and put that choice where it belongs, in the hands of we the people. Honestly, I hope that that last part covered the entire group of you. But just in case that there are the politicians up there, to the selfish politician, do you want to guarantee that you're replaced as soon as we can possibly do so, stripping you of whatever power that you think you have in the fastest legal way that we can? Then let this meeting close without a vote to remove the mask, and you can kiss your political career in this county goodbye. We will replace you at the first legal opportunity. And we will see to it that you never impose your selfish will on our kids and our community ever again. I hope that last part was pointless, as I hope that you are here for the right reasons. And I guess we're going to find out here in a few minutes. So that's it. That's my appeal. The good person restores the dignity and positivity to the student body by removing the mandate. The politician removes the mandate to save their own hide and to see their career live to fight another day. Which one are you? Honestly, tonight it doesn't matter. The choice is the same. Remove the mask. Thank you. God bless you and good luck. Lynn Schimpock. I'm Lynn Schimpock. I was here two months ago to no avail. Uh, to talk with you about the mask, to talk with you about in-person learning for our students. I have here, and I'm not going to have a chance to go through it because I'm given such limited time, but I have one for each of you, a letter from a pediatrician in uh, Burlington that says the mask made no difference when she took care of 5,000 children last year in an uptick when they were put on or a down tick when they were taken off. Neither one effect was affected by the mask. She said what it did affect the children was the fact that they had a mask on all the time and she saw rashes and she saw all sorts of things that took place with the kids. Bacterial infections, different things that the kids had to endure along with suicide increases, depression in children, all the things I talked about earlier. But really what I want to talk about tonight is our constitutional rights, folks. We have constitutional rights. And we have the right to speak, and we have the right to have our voice heard, and we have the right to say this shouldn't continue just because we have a tyrannical governor in this state. The state right next to us, South Carolina, has just made a mandate, no mask in their schools next year. What makes us any different, folks? There's already numerous counties who've said they're going to make their mask optional for next year. Why can't we do that? Why can't we have the choice? You have a choice. You can wear a mask or not. You have a choice. You can take this shot, which is experimental, or not. I have a choice 
and I can do likewise, and our children should too. Yes. This is just wrong. Are you aware that as many children, that me, the number of children that died from accidental bathtub drowning was equal to the number of kids that died of COVID? I mean, really, people, this is a disease that is not taking the lives of young people. They're not super spreaders. Why do we want to do this to our young people? I just don't understand. Why do we want to be so coercive? And why do we want to send out all these letters about get your vaccine? If you get your vaccine, you can do this. If you get your vaccine, you can do that. You have no idea what this vaccine may do to these children in the long run. Amen. Because there's no news out yet to let us know what the long-term effects are. I want to talk more, but I want to sum it up with this. Do you know what the Nuremberg Code is? Yes, At the end of World War II, there was a trial held, and they said there can be no experimental treatment of people from this point on, and that our physicians in this country are to follow that. And there was 10 standards. I run a copy here for each of you to read. This experimental shot breaks all 10 of these standards, yeah. folks. Okay, thank you. My father and my father-in-law fought in World War II. And now we're supposed to bend the knee to a virus that only takes the life of like 99.7% of the people. I want to conclude with this. Edmund Burke said, all that's necessary for evil to prevail is for good men to do nothing. Thank you. Please I know it. that you're good people. Act appropriately for our children in this county. Thank you. Brian, Brian Wright. Good evening. I am uh, Brian Wright. I'm pastor at Boomerang Church. And uh, I want to read you the opening lines of the Declaration of Independence. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and the equal station to which the laws of nature and nature's God entitle them, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impel them to the separation. <coughs> we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and they are endowed by their creator. Amen. They're endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights and among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That to secure these rights for the people, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed, yeah. the consent of the governed, not given by the government, but they get their powers from the consent of the government. The rights aren't given by the government. That whenever any form of government becomes destructive to these ends, it is the right of the people to alter or to abolish it and to institute new government, laying its foundations on such principles and organizing its powers in such form as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and their happiness. To them, their safety. You're behind safety. To them, the consent of the governed, the people. Now, if you don't agree with what I just read, honestly, you should not be in the position you are in, and you should resign now. Has our society in Stanley County regressed so much to the point to where the consent of the governed is no longer needed? Have we regressed where the consent of the governed is no longer? We're simply asking for a mask option. It's simply a mask option. For years, every mask study showed no effect on viruses. 2010, I've read them, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, all the way up to 2020, until it was politicized last year in a lower class study on those masks. 
Yet we do, not, we do know that our kids are at the least affected socially, mentally, and physically by wearing these masks. Yeah. For you to mandate masks is to say that our whole society cannot think for itself. Yeah. It has regressed, and now we need the elites to think for us. When your job in this republic should be representing what the people want. To not allow an option is saying that you bow more to the political heads than you consider the people of Stanley County that you are called to serve. Yes. If that's the case, you don't belong in Stanley County and you don't belong leading a people. Pastor, your time is up. Please be seated. Lastly, if the mask did work, then everyone that chooses to wear one should be fully protected from my child that won't. And if this bit of critical thinking has escaped you, then you are the last people that should be overseeing our children's education. Ashley Udy. My name is Ashley Udy. I stand here and represent my three school-aged children who are not to, of age to give any informed consent about anything they do in their life. I have been appointed by God to take care of my children for all of their health care decisions. I support optional masks option. It's just an option. You will wear one if you want to. You don't if you don't. It's simple. Reason one, I gave my 11 year old Tylenol or ibuprofen every single day when I picked him up from school from wearing his mask for eight hours. The lack of oxygen can cause a brain fog in these children and we expect our kids to learn with brain fog. Unmask our kids. Reason number two, wearing masks has compromised our immune system. The CDC website even says if kids get COVID, they are likely to have no symptoms or be asymptomatic. If you think about it, most of our kids likely have antibodies because we've been all out in the community, restaurants, Walmart, somebody in our family member have had COVID. Kids are not even considered high risk spreaders. Unmask our kids. Reason three, if my child is considered a minor until the age of 18, I have every right to decide if a covering should be placed over his face. And I honestly can't even believe that I had to say that last statement. To say we should, that something should be covering my kid's face is wrong, it's unhealthy, and morally, it should be sickening in our stomachs. Unmask our kids. In closing, I have lived in Stanley County my entire life and been very proud of us as a community. When you take God out of the Constitution and God out of our schools, fear and chaos ensues, and it needs to stop. I pray you board members use godly wisdom and respect us as parents, grandparents, and community members who are here to represent what's really in best interest for our kids. What happened to wisdom and common sense? We started this meeting out with a prayer, but I challenge each one of you, have each one of you gone into your prayer closet and asked the Holy Spirit to give you supernatural wisdom for our children. I say that respectfully. I know you can't respond, but think about that. Is this just like a decision you're going to make, or have you really asked the Holy Spirit what is best? While we are discussing schools, I'm going to branch off for just a few seconds. When's the last time you've driven or walked around one of our schools? They need major TLC. Our grounds at one time were well maintenance and pleasing to the eye. The outside of the middle school is an eyesore, and my son told me there's mold and mildew in the bathroom. If we are making our children a main focus and their health is a focus, let's get our act together, clean up our schools, and unmask our kids. Thank you. Stephen, Stephen Barnett. Hello, my name is Stephen Barnett and I have two boys aged 7 and 11. They are enrolled in this school system. I will present to you some of their issues with the mask and some facts also. Their issues are as follows. 
headaches, shortness of breath, increased anxiety. The mask would be wet and or have food particles in them when they pick when we pick them up. Often they look sick and pale, which clears up after about an hour or so. That being said, let's start with some facts and studies which didn't take long to find because there are so many out there. Many reports say that face masks do not work after 20 minutes due to saturation. Professor Yvonne Cassart of the Department of Infectious Diseases, University of Sydney, says that masks are only effective as long as they are dry. As soon as they become saturated with moisture in your breath, they stop doing their job. My children complain about their masks being wet all the time. The CDC website says, until a cloth mask design is proven to be equally effective as a medical or N95 mask, then wearing cloth masks should not be mandated for healthcare workers. They do not work for them, so why must our children wear them? A new study published in JAMA Pediatrics, a premier peer-reviewed pediatric journal, confirms that masking children is dangerous. In the study, 45 kids between the ages of 6 and 17 were asked to wear a face mask in a controlled environment. Within three minutes, they found that they were inhaling up to six times the acceptable limits of carbon dioxide for adults. One of the effects of this is hypercapnia, which is the buildup of carbon dioxide in the bloodstream. When it happens slowly, like with wearing a mask all day long, your heart and kidneys have to work harder so your body can keep up. Some of the signs of hypercapnia are anxiety, shortness of breath, sluggishness, and a headache. These are some of the problems my sons have complained about. You will be robbing these kids of oxygen and flooding their bodies with carbon dioxide by forcing these masks on them. I urge you to vote against making masks mandatory for these kids. They, this will only hurt them further, physically and emotionally. We ask that you make it optional instead. If other parents want to mask their kids, they can. But don't impose your fear on my kids. You are all elected officials and supposed to serve us, the people who voted for you. Do the right thing because we will not forget when election time comes. Thank you. Or do you've heard the public comments? This time the chair entertains a motion on the resolution. Can I speak, uh, can I speak just to offer any opposing Yes, ma'am, but you had your 15 minutes and the first five are going to speak. I have, I have somebody that I had come from far away to speak. Can we please let him speak? I mean, that, that's, again, that's a decision of the board. That's not the board chair's decision. Let hear everybody. Hear everybody. Hear everybody. Hear everybody. No. Can somebody, can somebody Everybody. 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 I mean, give him one minute. Just a single one. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, so we have an opportunity to discuss this further as a board and because um, I at least have the respect of a few people in the audience and hopefully after they hear some more information that they haven't had up until now, they're going to be a little bit um, more understanding, not necessarily in agreement, but a little bit more in understanding. I am going to personally make the motion that we approve the resolution as read, excluding item number two, as outlined by the superintendent. We have a motion, is there a second? What is, what's that, what is number two? Who's the parents? Second. Number two is school visitors, including parents and volunteers, be required to wear face coverings. It would be in lieu, um, number three would be in lieu. You're going to make our kids wear masks? 
aren't y'all wearing them tonight? I'm not going to listen to anything else. Chairman Chance. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I've had enough. Okay, I've had enough. Clear the room. Hold on one, one second. Chairman Chance, can, do you guys want to hear from us or not? No. Yes. Choice is yours. If you want to hear. No, no. I didn't ask if you want uh, if you want us to vote a certain way. Do you want to hear from each of us or not? I mean, if you do, you have to give us a chance to speak. Okay. So, so the only way that's going to happen is if everyone remains calm and the chairman's going to let everybody stay in here. It's just that simple. It's that simple. Since I've got here, you barely listen to the people. Amen. Two hours in Fayetteville on a flat tire, and I didn't take a bathroom break. So I think you guys who have been voted in by these people Amen. in this county. Sir, who are you? <clears throat> Sir. He's invited by the people. Who is he? I am this. I'm J. Antoine Miner, CEO of Impact One Foundation out of Fayetteville. Our program uh, provides services throughout the entire North Carolina, and I'm running for mayor in Fayetteville. Well, what? Okay, this chairman, chairman, hold on, hold on. We have and a policy. I swore my name is on that list to talk. Okay, I we, yeah. we, I we, so if my name is on that list, I'd like to talk. We have a motion. We have a motion and a second on the floor. I'm going to let the board discuss it. I'd like to recognize it. That was a disrespectful joke. Go ahead. Before, before you folks break out your, uh, your lynching ropes and your and your crosses to, to hang us upon. How about letting us talk? What about us? All right, let me talk. I ain't up here because I don't. You know, I, I'm gonna tell you the truth. The political things y'all threatening me, I could, I couldn't care less. Now y'all listen to me. You, you're, it's your, you had your turn to talk. It's my turn to talk. I have been listening. To, here's, here's the reality. You don't want to hear anything except what you want to hear. You might be missing out on what you want to hear. We had a debate this afternoon that lasted for hours and hours and hours. It was contentious. And these people up here that I have a great deal of respect for, it was basically the same kind of sh a shouting match we got right here. I backed out because once you get to the point where nobody's listening, there ain't no sense talking. All right? Here's the reality. That young lady talked about going to the Holy Spirit and some other fellow talked about research. I have lost tons of sleep over this issue. Tons. Sleepless nights. And I'm, I'm going I'm to challenge anybody in here. I've probably got three, 400 hours of research on the Internet deciphering what's real and what's BS, because let's face it, 90% of it's BS. I oppose the mandate. But, but the, pers the reality is, I'm, I'm going to stick with that too, but I oppose the mandate, but the governor of North Carolina put us in a really cool position where we're damned if we do and we're damned if we don't. If we don't have this situation, the health department makes a phone call to Raleigh and they shut our schools down. There is no virtual option. So I personally, because I feel the whole thing is a political play from Roy Cooper, I stand opposed to the mandate. But y'all are beating these folks up here. That, that, what do you think? It's just it's not worth it. So I'm just, Mr. That's all I got Mr. To say. Chair, Mr. Chair, may I, may I speak? There's many of you in the audience that I, I know, uh, many of you that, that I do not know. Some of you I responded to um, your emails, your conversations. Um, I had some very nice emails and conversations. Um, some were rather hostile. But here, here is what I, here's what I have learned. Again, two weeks ago, probably even one week ago, I would have voted to make masks optional, but here's what I, here's what you need to know. In the, in the school, in the new toolkit that we have, if 
if we're going to keep our schools open, and I have three grandchildren, I have one starting kindergarten. Do I want them wearing masks? I, I don't, but here's what I want more than anything. I want my grandchildren and your children to be in school face to face five days a week until we can get our numbers under control. Now, now, listen, listen. In the toolkit, the toolkit clearly states if your child is wearing a mask, they're sitting next to a child that's wearing a mask. If someone is tested positive, your child does not have to quarantine. If your child is not wearing the mask, they have to, they have to quarantine. Now, I want, I, I want our children in school face to face. Will this, will we be able to have our mask, wear our mask, and this board come back together and in four weeks? We're able, no, you're speaking, you're, you're telling me what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to happen. And see, you're, you're acting like you know what's going to happen. Here's the thing, here's the thing. Last year, my granddaughter, my granddaughter, she was quarantined three different times. She was out of school 14 days. She went back to school. Guess what? She was there two weeks. She was quarantined 14 days. She went back to school. She was there two or three weeks. She was quarantined 14 days. So this year, I want my grandchildren to be with a teacher face to face. If it takes that she's got to wear a mask to be able to be in that classroom to learn, then Glenda, Glenda, Mr. Chairman, may I? I no, I want to. No, that's okay. Not All right. Okay. Let me. You guys, give me a second here. Um, so, as of midnight last night, I was emailing some folks, and I essentially emailed everyone um, for the past couple weeks. And I said, um, I agree with you 100% about all the information that was being um, presented. Um, the mask, uh, even if they worked, the reality is, as people have spoken about weeks ago and, and, and including now, um, the reality is that, that many respected physicians, doctors, um, have documented with studies that even children um, that have some pre-existing conditions uh, have not experienced extreme effects from COVID. Um, and that the mortality rate, actually, uh, if you take out any children that had pre-existing conditions, is zero. That's from Johns Hopkins, okay? I mean, the number one medical school in the country, or medical, yeah, university and hospital in the country. Um, and one of the things that's interesting is that, and I said in my email that I would be presenting a motion, a resolution to adopt a resolution making mask optional. This morning, when we all showed up at eight o'clock for a work session, um, as Mr. Sorensen pointed out, who is a retired teacher in Stanley County um, and loved in South Stanley County, um, he, uh, we started out by reviewing, and, and I don't have a copy over it or I read it to you, but it was a resolution that was not dissimilar to other resolutions passed by other counties in the state of North Carolina that made mask optional. And everybody, well I don't want to say everybody, but I was happy. I'm like, oh this is great, this is going to be excellent. I will make the motion, or if somebody else wants to make the motion, I don't have to make the motion. It doesn't have to be about me. I don't care. I'll second the motion or I'll just vote. Then we had a presentation from the health board. 
Now, well, that's okay. I mean, look, the, the facts are the facts, but the reality, but there's a point to this. The point is, is that COVID is on a rise. Okay, okay, according, according to the state of North Carolina, COVID positivity and transmission is on the rise. According, according to positive tests, I'm not saying that they're all 100% accurate, but according to the state of North Carolina, the state of North Carolina goes by these numbers. So we all have to either live by these numbers or there's chaos. So let's just all agree for a second that these numbers might be right, okay? Even if they're right, it doesn't mean that any kids are a danger of death. We've already said that, we've already agreed. Every single thing, or at least 99.5% of the things that everybody said tonight, we all agree with. That's why I was making the motion. That's why many up here were gonna support the motion. Now we got these numbers, and there were a couple things that I learned that I didn't know that were part of this toolkit. And where this all goes, and you need to hear this, because I can say most of us agree a thousand percent with you, but we need to focus our attention on the people that can do something about this, and I'll explain why, and it's at the state level. And you're right, elections have consequences. And, 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 a, and the gubernatorial election had a massive consequence that we're dealing with now. What they did at the state level when they introduced this new toolkit, and it was not by it was not by accident, was they removed the remote option. Because what we could have done is we could have said to parents, listen, um, let's say that we had a legitimate reason, or at least a reason that we all felt we could agree to why we weren't going to make it optional. I just said, as of midnight last night, I'm emailing people saying I'm going to introduce the resolution to make it optional. When they remove the remote option from us, it means we can't, it, it means parents don't have the option of saying, you know what, I disagree with the board, I disagree with the school system, I disagree with the state, I'm going to keep my kids home and I'm going to let them do remote schooling. It's not an option. And that's, and that's state, that's not an Excuse me? Yes, that's from the state of North Carolina. If you read the toolkit, the there's there's no there's no plan B or plan C. To go remotely, so if Cumberland County can go remote, why can't Stanley County? That means the governor's mandate is not a law. It's not right. Mandate. The entire county, the entire. I'm going to answer your question. That's a good question. The answer is that the entire county can go remote, or we can go face to face instruction in person. We don't have the resources to do both. We do not have the staff or the resources to do both. Last year, there was funding to be able to support options A and B or A, B, and C. See me? Okay, so. What? No. No. Yeah, the, it doesn't mean the state's going to recognize it. Here's the thing. We don't have a remote option. Every parent, and just as passionate as everyone is, and I've talked to parents, countless parents, and they've said, get my kids back in school. And they also don't want them to wear masks, but they're like, and they also don't want them to wear masks, but they say, get our kids back in school. And there are parents that are saying, look, if our kids have to wear the mask, I want them in school because my kid's falling behind, their brothers and sisters. Well, it may not be the case for you, but it is for your neighbors, some of your neighbors. I mean, not everybody's the same. So the reality is this. The reality is, is that the state, the governor, has basically said, through the quarantines, okay, if you're, if you are a student and you are wearing a mask and another student in your classroom that you've come in close proximity to, unlike last year, you will not have to quarantine. The problem is the school has no authority. The school system has no authority. If a child is tested positive and the guidelines for quarantine are that if you come in close proximity with the child, 
you also have to be quarantined. Last year, one of the struggles that the school system had to deal with was staffing because we had classes that had to stay home because the entire class was quarantined. It wasn't fair, it wasn't right. And it doesn't make the mask mandate any more right. We're just trying to explain the situation. One of the realities that we're facing is that it is very possible that we could have entire classes. We have vacancies across the county that we're trying to fill. We don't have enough staffing now. If we are losing classes, if we lose teachers, it's very likely that we're gonna be losing classes. It's not guaranteed, but we might even have to shut a school down. Nobody wants that. So here's the thing. When we all met this morning and we looked at the situation and we realized what the quarantine guidelines were, which we have no control over, which were completely architected by the governor to create the situation right here, the situation is that counties that have said it's gonna be optional, if they have to quarantine all these students, it's very likely that they're gonna be shutting these classes and schools down. On the other hand, some counties have said, well, we're gonna mandate the mask, that, that the masks are mandatory. What we did, and I know it's, it's hard to hear it and to follow it, um, but what this resolution does is it creates, I believe, personally, I only speak for myself, a reasonable compromise that can be adjusted. And what that compromise is, is that using the state's own scale, I believe against them or to our benefit, there are four scales or four ranges that they use around transmissibility. And what we did was, we said we are gonna use the middle of that scale and if the, if the percentage falls in the middle of that scale or lower, that the superintendent automatically, doesn't have to have a special meeting with us, automatically has the ability to make all the mask optional, mask optional in the county. Despite what the governor says, Will we do that? but, yes, yes, but if it goes above that, what that means, it doesn't mean that we agree anymore with the mask, but what it does agree, it means that the likelihood that we are gonna be bitten by the state's quarantine and have to shutter entire classes is very real. Now, we agreed in our meeting today, and this is public, this is a public session that we had this in. It was not personnel, it was public. We discussed this for hours, like Mr. Sorensen said. We said, we agreed, we will keep a constant eye on this. If we need to adjust it up or down, then we will discuss it. We can have special called meetings. The reality is this, Governor Cooper has stuck us in a position where if we go totally one way, there's absolutely no scientific justification for doing it, and it absolutely imposes undue hardship, I believe, on the entire school system. On the other hand, if we make it entirely optional, we are going to run into a situation where the school system is gonna to have to deal with real problems and there will be many students that are gonna be forced into remote learning, and there's no system for it, into remote learning, which is gonna put a burden on the students that are gonna, excuse me, the teachers, who have to deal with this, the teachers are then gonna to have to try and balance in class and remote at the same time. Go ahead. I don't mean this as a, like a disrespectful question, but I think y'all, I, I appreciate what you're saying. Thank you, and thank y'all for speaking and explaining. Thank you for taking the time. Yes. But one of the questions I have, y'all are in the same boat as we are, we're just at different levels of the boat. Um, what happens when they tell us we have to shut a school down, where's the police that comes and says, Stanley County, you can't go back to school? Right. Why can't we not operate as a government in Stanley County and keep our schools running and push back? Right. The reason, now, yeah, yeah. look, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a legitimate question. No, look, these conversations many of us are having every night. We get phone calls and we talk to people and I talk to people. It's a legitimate question. And that is the question. The question is, do we, when the state says, that you have to quarantine these students, do we let the students in and then the state comes and shuts the school? Is Stanley County Sheriff's Department, can they come and, and, and walk these kids in? Here, here's, here's the thing though, 
The problem is, it's not about putting the sheriff's department in an awkward position or the county commissioners or even the board. It's about the state playing games. And here is one bit of evidence that proves this. Last year, whether you were masked, everybody was masked. If somebody tested positive, the student right next to them was going to have to be quarantined. Why is it that if I'm a student and I test positive, a student sitting to my right that's wearing a mask can stay in school if they're asymptomatic? But yet the student sitting next to me on my left who's not wearing a mask has to be quarantined for 14 days. Why are the parents punished? Why is the student punished over here? Is the science not the same? Am I not breathing on the person to the right of me or to the left of me? All of this is true. The mask, we understand. We agree with you. But the issue is this. It doesn't mean that we have the authority to keep the schools open if we're put in a situation. That's why we, we took the scale. And we're hoping, based on the resolution and the language of the resolution, it says that if it's low, there has to be a period of at least two days where we're over the threshold that represents a high to severe level of positive test and transmission. And, but, which is where we are right now in Stanley County. And then if it dips, it automatically kicks in. So what we're saying is we're gonna use science, not the governor's lies. We're gonna use science to dictate our policy. I believe it is a fair compromise that balances keeping the kids in school and not punishing any particular kids, Mr. Chairman. but also giving us the flexibility to make the mask, and, and, and the state doesn't have to agree with this. We would still be going against the state, but making it optional um, and keeping the schools open as long as possible. Mr. Graves. My question is, how are you yes. testing these kids? Because we're not, we don't test. The Ms. Poplin, you have the floor, please. Uh, I would just like to speak, and guys, if you will, just bear with me. This is about sustainable face-to-face -face education for our students. I have students in the school system. I understand I'm just like Mr. Graves. A week ago, I would have not feel the way I feel right now, but with our numbers the way they are and the information in the toolkit, our kids are going to have to be sent home time and time again at no avail to us. Please let me finish, okay? Um, our teachers are going to be sent home. Your children are going to be sitting at home with worksheets with no help and no way to accomplish school, no face to face, okay? We want to get all of our students back in the classroom face to face, Monday through Friday, as much as possible. We know that that's what's best for learning and for education for our students. We are trying to work with what we were given with this toolkit to make, once our numbers get in the range that is not red, so that this can be optional. We have given Dr. Dennis the go ahead. As soon as we are in those levels, the masks are optional at that point, okay? We have to put the mask back on so that we can manage school. That's the only way we can do it without tons of subs, tons of people. We don't have the resources to keep these students face to face. It is not sustainable for a full year of school. Dr. Lafley, you have the floor. I got a question. I got a couple questions I'm going to ask. I'm a uh, retired physician on the board. I'm a board member. I'm for the students. I'm for the community. I've been here 40 years. Wait a minute. I'm talking. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Get these folks out of here if this is going to be the case. I'm not going to continue a meeting like this. Can I ask my question? No. No. Okay, I'm going to ask a question. Thank you. No, no. You can't. Listen. I got two questions. No. The first, one is, the first question is that you're not going to talk. The second question is, I'm a physician. I'm on the board. It's not about... This is problem. It's not about you. It's about everybody in the community. 
COVID is not a joke. I'm sure that you all have family members, parents, friends that have gotten COVID and have gotten bad results. We're trying to do the best for the whole community. We're trying to educate your children. Okay. That's all I'm saying. I, the board is going to be in recess for 10 minutes. I, I, I heard enough. All right. No, no, board wants, there's a motion on the floor. The board wants to vote. I, we're we're going to vote. All the vote. All those in favor of the resolution say aye and raise your right hand. Aye. Those opposed? The motion carries. Way to go, Bill. Sit down, we're not done. Motion to go back. Motion to go back into uh, open session. I make a motion we go back into open session. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Um, Dr. Dennis, I believe you have curriculum and instruction. Yes, sir. What I have before you is the uh, consolidated federal program plan. These are for Title One, Two, Three, and Four monies we get from uh, from the feds. Uh, as you'll see, you're looking at the amounts and the carryover amounts that we're going to be using and what we do is we use this form right here to pretty much uh, we this is what we base our plan around so as you see the numbers that we'll be working with as you see what they'll be used for I just need you to approve these uh, so that we can go ahead and formulate our plan which will be uh, submitted by September 30th to DPI. Chair will entertain a motion on the consolidated federal program plan for title one two three and four. I make a motion we approve. Motion by Mr. Sorensen. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Watson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. aye. And those opposed, no. Okay. Personnel administration, Dr. Dennis, I think you're still up. Yes, sir. If you move to section two, which is action required, um, I need a motion, recommendations to add F, and F will be athletic director supplements. I make a motion that we add F <coughs> to the personnel agenda. And approve it as presented or? Y yes. Okay, motion by Ms. Hopland. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Gibson. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carries. Auxiliary services, Mr. Dadney. Okay. Right. Superintendent's comments. I only have two comments. Just to remind everyone that um, first day of school is the 23rd. Looking to see uh, all the kids come back, and our early colleges uh, they will start on I believe the 12th. Okay. Um, board member comments. Bob. Um, I would just like to thank those that came to speak tonight. Um, and uh, I would like to thank our board today for um, working together and uh, getting this taken care of. Thank you. Dr. Leffler. I would also like to thank the community for coming to speak, and I'd like to thank the board for spending about eight hours today on working on this, on something that a lot of people think we didn't put thought in, but. We put thought in it just like we do our kids or our grandkids. and We didn't do anything any different than we'd do for them. Ms. Gibson. 
Um, certainly thank you for um, our county office. I appreciate all that you do. And um, Dr. Dennis, and I enjoyed working with this board today. Um, I enjoyed the discussions that we had, um, the respect that we had for each other. Um, so I really appreciate that. For those of you who stayed, um, thank you. I know you're passionate. Um, I appreciate that. Um, and just, I guess just to say that I hear you and we are, we are trying. Thank you. Mr. Sorensen. I'm going to yield my time. Ms. Watson. Well, I would like to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, thank you all for coming also. Um, and I would like for you to know that I love your children just like you do. Yes, I do. I pray every day for this board, every day for this board, that we make good decisions for these children and our staff. And I think we've done that. Thank you. All right. Mr. Graves, do you have anything else? Yes, sir. Um, I want to thank Kaylin Honeycutt and Ms. Shimpock. I also want to thank Pastor Brian Wright, who I respect a great deal and know personally. Um, and I want to thank Ashley Udi, who I also have known for many, many years um, and respect very much. Um, and I appreciate her stand as a Christian um, and her boldness in front of the public, speaking out on behalf of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for that. Um, it's not uh, something you hear often in uh, the public meetings, but maybe we should hear it more often. Um, and then also, uh, Mr. Barrett, I believe. Or is it Barrett? Barnett, I'm sorry. Um, I wanted to recognize the people that came up because I know at least some of you will, will um, believe that most of us are truly in agreement with you. I want to say to any counties that are watching this, in no way, shape, or form should uh, our resolution, which I think personally um, is a model, certainly better than the ones that are mandating the mask, uh, for other counties potentially to follow. At least it, it's credible um, and it's logical, uh, unlike the state's policies regarding all of this nonsense. I don't want any county to construe our vote in any way, shape, or form as a vote for any of the nonsense, fake medical news that you hear in the mainstream media. It's not true. We did not vote because we believe that Governor Cooper and his administration are correct. We did not take this resolution because we support them. As a matter of fact, we're opposed. And I would just say this, I would encourage people to take this energy. I will go with you. If people want to start going to Raleigh every Saturday, I'll go with you. We need to go to the state and deal with this problem where it can be dealt with. Now, I'm not saying that this resolution that we passed tonight is perfect, but I believe it was a fair compromise. We will continue to look at it. We will fine tune it so that we can maximize the amount of time kids are not wearing masks because they shouldn't have to and keep our schools open versus having to require them to wear a mask for some phony reasons that the state of North Carolina, the governor, and the General Assembly needs to step up and do their job. They need to step up and do their job and they tell people, well, go to the school board. The school board doesn't have the authority, doesn't have the authority. But I think we tried our best tonight. I think we've done better than a lot of uh, counties that took the easy route out um, or in, in both directions. And, and, and so um, just give us a chance. Some of you I know will, I appreciate that very much. And, and all of us will continue to work very hard to make sure that we have the best policy to get the kids off of the mask as soon as we can. I promise you that. I promise you that. So what's that magic number? I don't know. Like oh, 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 oh. We could, we, I don't want to take up any more time. I'm happy to stay around and we could talk about that. Yep. I'm not dodging. I just have to be respectful. 
Chair will entertain a motion that the board go back into closed session for personnel matters. Uh, General Statute 143-318-11-A6. To close session. Motion and have a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Call the board back into open session. Our next meeting will be Tuesday, September the 7th. Uh, location and time to be determined. At this point, the board will chair will entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion by Ms. Gibson. Do I have a second? Second by Ms. Poplin. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. We're adjourned.